Hey everyone, this is Daniel and in today's video we're going to talk about Microsoft Forms admin settings and I'm going to cover a whole bunch of things starting with how do you access this Microsoft Form admin center and what role do you need to get there and then from a setting standpoint I'll talk about the important things such as how do I control this external user access how do I control the sharing of the images and the videos and then also the phishing protection which is very important from a security standpoint so these are the important things I'm covering. Stick around, but first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. So the first thing I want to talk about is where is this admin settings all together for the Microsoft Forms, all right? And we'll talk about the role that you need, but let's just figure out where it is because here's what I'm thinking is, when I come to the Microsoft Forms and I go to the top right, which is the settings gears, I don't see really admin settings settings over here. Also, if I go and create a new form and on the new form, now I actually see a settings gear. This information is tied very specific to the form level. So where is this admin settings for Microsoft Forms? Now, when I looked into the documentation, Here's what I found is you actually have to go to the Microsoft 365 admin center. Then you got to expand the whole thing just to make sure you're seeing it. Go to settings, go to org settings. And in the org settings, as you scroll down just a little bit, you see the Microsoft forms. And when you click on the Microsoft forms, this is now what you see at the tenant level. Like you're controlling the entire usage of the Microsoft forms. And as you can see, it's got a lot of information and ability over here. You control the external sharing, you control all the record names in your organization, the allowing of the YouTube and the Bing, which is the images and the videos that you can add, and also the phishing protection. But more of this to come in a minute. So now that we know where it is, the next thing which you think of is what role level access do you need to get over here? Because me doing this demo that I just showed to you, I'm a global level access. I'm a global admin, which means I got Uber level access to get over here. But if you're a company which follows the least privileged access or separation of duties, then finding that exact security level is very important. All right. So some of the big roles that I tried because I thought, you know what, they already have great amount of access. Maybe they will also have access to this is the SharePoint online exchange online and the Microsoft teams, any of these admin centers. I tried those and I'll tell you, it didn't work out very well. I also went and tried these other ones. There was actually two other ones, which was the global reader. And there's also called service support admin. And I tried those as well. And I tell you, I didn't really find a lot of information from them. The global reader was able to at least read it. So let me, let me show that to you, right? So let's do the first one, which is the SharePoint online admin. Okay. So here is Diego. Diego is a SharePoint online admin center. And as I can go and click on show all, you can see that I see the admin centers over here. And if I could go and click on all admin centers, I can see the OneDrive and SharePoint, which is very typical for a SharePoint online admin center. But let's go and repeat those same process to see, do I see Microsoft Forms? And for that, I went to settings. I do see settings. I do see org settings. When I click on org settings, this is it. This is all that I see. And I don't have a way to kind of like, is it a filter that I've automatically filtered or, or what is it? What is even the organization profile? Like, no, this is it. So we already went ahead and kind of X'd out the SharePoint online admin setting option. Like, okay, that didn't take care of that. So next, let's go and take a look at Exchange Online. So here we've logged in as Joni. Joni is an Exchange Online admin center. I click on the show all, and as you can see under the admin centers, I see Exchange. Just to be on the safe side, I click on all admin centers, and I see Exchange. Now, when for Exchange admin user, when we go and try to do the same thing, settings, click on org settings, we do see a little bit more. So this is just a really good tidbit for you all as well to understand that, hey, Exchange Online does see all these other things. And why? Because it's tied to Exchange Online. But when I come back and you know, look at organization profile or I'm even checking to see, hey, is there any filter over here which has blocked me? None of that. So now we've gone ahead and X'd out the second option, which is the Exchange Online doesn't have access as well. So let's take a look at Teams. So now Lynn has logged in. Lynn is a Teams admin, which means she's got the Teams admin role. I go and expand with the show all. I see Teams. I go and click on all admin centers and I see Teams over here. I go and expand the settings. Now I go and look at org settings and this is all that she sees right now, all right? Again, we are not seeing the forms admin that we just saw the global admin has, all right? So now we've also gone and canceled the Microsoft Teams admin. 
What we'll do is we'll go take a look at one more user. The user's name is called a service support admin. That kind of sparked my curiosity a little bit because I thought that that service support admin takes care of all these other admin settings, which we you know we specifically didn't see on the SharePoint exchange. So let's let's go take a look at that and see what happens over there. I've logged in as Isaiah. Isaiah that has very specific called service support admin. It's actually a role. And when I log in, I can go and click on expand all, and I'm going ahead and basically seeing what admin level has. It's basically very limited. I even go and expand the settings. I go to org settings. And this is basically all I see is the productivity score. So the name service support admin, even though as enticing as it sounded, it really didn't give any more information. So the last option I had, I said, let me at least try that one was the global reader. Cause we know the global reader can at least see a lot. Does it give that person even access to edit or see the Microsoft form admin settings? So let's, let's go take a look at that last option. Okay. So now we have logged into the admin setting as Nestor. Nestor has global reader level access, which is pretty high and he's got global reader. And as you can see right over here, when I click on show all, I see all the admin setters. I'm already a little excited because this might just work. So I go now to settings. I go to org settings, org settings. I'm seeing a whole lot. And when I scroll down, I was like, Ooh, I'm excited. I see Microsoft forms over there. I'm, I'm, you know, this is, this is pretty much it. This might just be that role. So when I click on Microsoft forms and eh, the first thing I see is you don't have permission to save changes. So this is still not that bad. All right. Cause if you want to have some kind of access level, then you basically go and at least have the global reader so you can see what is going on over there. All right. So all said and done, I've proven it to you that right now, if you want to be a Microsoft forms admin and you want to go and take care of these settings, then you have to be a global admin in order to do all of this. Any of the other roles will not work. So this was a very important point that I made and I proved it to you by going and checking all the other roles. All right. So now that we've taken care of this, let's talk about the external sharing. Okay. So I'm inside Microsoft forms now and I'm just going to, you know, randomly make a new form and I'll just call this as a live, you know, demo form. And when I come over here, this is normally majority of you, majority of you see this, you come over here to the settings, you click on the settings and this is what you see. Anyone can respond. And then for only people in my organization, you have all these other options. In fact, you can go and click on this share upstairs or up here. And when you click on that, there's a drop down. You even see anyone can respond. And if I click on this or have a mouse over it, you actually see that option. So this is what I mean by external sharing right now is that you have full access or full flexibility to go ahead and build a form, which can be used by people outside your tenant outside your you know, environment your people outside, basically outside your company or your organization. So when you go and select on anyone can respond, you can use the existing URL, you can shorten that URL, or you can go and take a QR code for somebody to scan and it will just work. You are able to have that full flexibility outside anonymous access, no authentication needed. It will just work. So the question is then Daniel, how do I block this? And for that, we got to go back to the Microsoft forms admin center. So let's go take a look over there. So in my Microsoft uh, 365 admin center, again, I had to go into the settings, click on the org settings, come over here, scroll down a little bit. And this is where I found the Microsoft forms. And this is where all the magic happens for all the settings. So let's, let's pick spend a few seconds on the external sharing on the external sharing. You've got four really good options. You've got the option to send a link to the form and collect responses. That one is basically this one, send a link to collect responses basically saying that, Hey, do I need to go ahead and send the entire form? That's what it is. Send and collect responses, then share to collaborate on the form and structure. That means you've got the flexibility to share on the form outside as well. So you basically go and share the link of the form, which is getting edited and there you can collaborate together. Then also save the form as a template that can be duplicated. That's basically this one share as a template. That's the link that you go and share. So, Hey, you went and spent some time building a form. I want to share this entire form with the whole world. Well, you create that link, send it to someone, someone can open it up in their tenant and save it in their tenant across the two tenants over there. And then there's also the fourth option is share the form results summary. So that's the four options for the external sharing. That's why right now when I come and I go ahead and click on the share, or I go and click on the settings, all of these are available. Any of them can, you know, open the form or use the form. Or when I click on share, I can go in and do all of this magic. But what happens when I go and disable it? Well, let's go take a look at that. All right. 
So I have gone ahead and logged into Microsoft 365 Admin Center as a global admin. And as you know, I can go ahead and do the show all just to prove that I have that. I'll go and now click on settings, org settings. And on the right, I've got this flexibility now to find my Microsoft forms. And over here, I've actually gone ahead and unchecked the boxes ahead of time. Now that I've unchecked it, let's go to Microsoft Forms. I'll go and create a new form. And once I'm going and creating a new form, when I try to do this share over here, as you can see, anyone can respond, does show up, but it's completely grayed out. Grayed out means I cannot use this. So when I go and now even go to this settings and I go and click on that settings, it is still grayed out. So it's not that it shows up in one place and doesn't show up the other one, no. It is grayed out, period. You really can't do anything. Now, what I have noticed is that, say you already had the access for external sharing, all right, and then you've gone ahead and um, unchecked that box, it can take up to an hour, depending on which tenant you have, for that effect to take, for that setting to take effect. So kind of keep that in mind that it's not immediate. In my tenant, which is still, you know, it's, it's a good sized tenant. I mean, it doesn't have millions of people, it has 10, 25 people. Um, it was still taking at least a solid one hour for that thing to take effect. So something to keep in mind that this does happen, it will happen, the setting is available, it just takes that little time. So this is basically that external sharing point. Again, it will work. You have the flexibility to go ahead and turn that off. The option to use it does get grayed out. It'll still show up over there, but it gets grayed out, but it will work and now you cannot go ahead and share your content outside your company. It's very important information that you as an admin need to be aware of this. Okay, so while we are continuing, let's go and finish up the other ones, which is the images and video search and the phishing protection. So let's go back into the Microsoft Forms and in our Microsoft Forms, what I've done is I'm gone ahead and now actually uncheck the box for including Bing search and YouTube videos. Well, Daniel, I don't remember what it was before when we had it. How does it look? Can you just show me the ones which it already has? Sure. Let's just go back and take a look at a fully functional one. All right. So this is the one which is it doesn't have any of that limitations. Everything is checked in. So now I go over here and when I click, well, first of all, let's go and take a look at the settings. In the settings, everything is good. But now when I go and try to add, I have this flexibility. I can get the image from a search, which is basically doing a Bing search or I can go ahead and actually, you know, get this information directly from that search. In the other one where I've gone ahead and unchecked that option, this is what it looks like. Now let's go back to this one. That's it, I, I have gone ahead and unchecked it. So I'll select that. And now first thing is you notice the icon for the image itself altogether disappeared. But we'll continue, right? We'll just go and say that I'm gonna do the choice one. In this case, the image did show up. I can click on it, insert image, and now you see, the options just disappeared for the Bing one. This is basically what you see. And it's a big difference between the other one. And the other one, this is what it looks like, right? Huge big difference. I clicked on that one, I was able to see this option. Over here, I'm able to see the image and the video option. So very important piece that you understood is that when you go and disable that functionality for getting the um, image and the YouTube videos, um, you are able to still use your own videos from your OneDrive. The setting to use it is completely different. Still very intuitive, just completely different, all right? Now, last but definitely not the least, let's take a look at the phishing protection. All right, let me go to the one which already has it turned on, all right? I'll go over here and it basically says, the phishing protection is allow users and your organizers to add images from Bing and YouTube, which is all great. So what exactly is the phishing, uh, phishing protection? It is proactively scanning forms for your in-org responses and will automatically block them if they have any type of phishing questions detected. A great phishing question is getting any of the personal information, like social security number. If any of that shows up, it will block it and it will go ahead and send you a message in your admin notification center. Basically in the message center, it will go and send you a notification that, hey, this form does have that phishing information because it's asking for personal information. And by message center, what it means is right here. When I come over to the left side, I have health. When I expand the health, this is where I have message center. And in the message center, a message would actually come up saying that, hey, it did identify one of the forms, which is potentially a phishing type of form because it's gathering personal information. And what it will do is it'll actually go ahead and block the use of that form. Like the submit button actually gets grayed out. It takes it to that level. So it's a very important tool. That's something that you need to be aware of. So hopefully this video was helpful to you. Now you kind of have a little bit more thorough understanding of what this Microsoft Form Admin Settings is all about. I even showed you what role do you need to actually get there and what are the important settings available to control the features in these Microsoft Forms. So hopefully this was helpful. And as always, keep using Microsoft Forms.
Thank you so much for watching my YouTube video. Remember, this is all free with fresh content that is updated on a weekly basis. So if you've already subscribed to my channel, thank you and spread the word. If you haven't already, subscribe, click on the bell notification and let the learning begin.